Welcome to the Romance Class YouTube channel and our series featuring the audio edition of my book, Iris After the Incident, narrated by Rachel Coates. Subscribe to our channel to be notified when new chapters go up. Head over to romanceclassbooks.com for more romance by Filipino authors. Content warnings are mentioned in Chapter 1 and are included in the description for this video. Chapter 5 Envy Park Tower 2 had a slightly different color scheme, shades of blue and teal where our tower was reddish-brown. I probably only crossed over to the tower next door to pick something up from the admin office there, and never made it up to the 8th floor recreational area. The common areas were all a little different, probably to target a different kind of demographic of residents. Tower 1 had gardens and meditation areas. Tower 3 had a big gym and workout-ready pool. Tower 2 had pool tables and a party area, with what could pass for a bar. Not that people were using it on Saturday nights to party hard. <laughs> it was empty and dark, pretty much, when we got there. This looks like the saddest club I've ever seen, I told him. Why are you whispering? I, I don't know. Is it okay that we're here at this hour? Of course it is. The common areas in this different tower were open air, and the lights were all shut. 9J headed over in the direction of the wall and flipped a switch. Light came on in one quadrant of the space, illuminating an unused pool table. Unused, only in a matter of speaking, because nearly the entire surface of it was occupied by lots and lots and lots of jigsaw puzzle pieces. Separate pieces, scattered haphazardly around a small section of completed puzzle, which was a portion barely larger than an A4 size paper. What is this? I don't know. I mean, I know it's a puzzle, but why is it so large? What's it supposed to look like? 9J went right for a small pile of pieces and picked it up, showing me an orange-colored one. That's what I meant. I don't know what it's supposed to look like. The guards told me that a tenant with a hobbyist kid left it here and then gave up on it. No one was using the pool table anyway, and they noticed that residents were dropping by and giving it a shot, so they never threw it out. The piece he showed me didn't look like anything. The rest of those in the pile, all various shades of orange, didn't make sense to me either. Then I noticed the other small piles, grouped by similar colors, and the others seemed prominently brown and black and gray. I suspect, 9J added, that it's a photo of the sky at sunset. So most of the puzzle would be based on a gradient background that's probably a lot of red and orange, and that's why we've got all these variations of the same color. You're the one grouping the same color pieces? Well, yeah. Makes sense to do it that way, without a reference photo. Holy crap! There were a lot of pieces. If I hadn't stressed that enough, the puzzle, when completed, would probably take up most of the pool table. So, no one else in the building has used the pool table since then? 9J tested the piece he was holding against the portion of puzzle. No, it didn't fit. It's a thing in this tower. The guards see people coming back to try to put a piece in. Through CCTV? Yeah, apparently some people take their friends and look at this monstrosity. Are there dates? I said. His eyebrow sort of quirked there. This too strange for you? So, you actually come over here to do this? How often? A couple of times a week. And only if there's no one else here. It's very relaxing, I have to admit. Oh, I understood. I could imagine how this kind of thing could take over your brain for however much time you gave it. The satisfaction finding that one piece that fit in the right space... In the past two years, I'd been told to take up everything from yoga to pottery to sword fighting, anything to get my mind off myself. Instead, I just went on as usual, but in private. Are you really into this? I asked him, my fingers tracing the curves on a reddish piece. Or is it because you get to kill time without anyone bothering you? I have other hobbies, social ones. Like what? I'm on the Saturday football team. That's where I came from earlier. Oh, do you play on the open field outside? Yeah, we do. 
That's very well adjusted of you, then. <laughs> but yes, he said. I come up here when I don't feel like talking to anyone. And that's a lot more than usual lately. You probably understand why. Of course I do. Because we were runaways. That shared look again. So strongly, I wish that I could know for sure if you really understood. My mind flashed forward to a possible future of me, finding out that he had played me, pretending not to have recognized me, got me into bed after two dates and a sob story, lost interest after he'd had the real thing and preferred the video version. Video version Iris had a smaller waist, tighter abs. She was regularly working out, though she didn't like it. Her boyfriend at the time liked that she worked out and regularly complimented the results. 9M. And he let that trail off as he tested the piece against another part of the puzzle and grunted with satisfaction when the piece slid in and locked. It was a good sound. Do you really want to do this? Do I really want to spend the rest of the night putting this puzzle together? Seems impossible, so no. No one wants to do that all night. I mean, this. Him and me, as his finger dutifully began pointing. No names, no specifics. Why not? It wasn't that much more awkward or difficult than a real first date with someone who knew my name. Or he really needed to talk to someone too. I don't have the best references, I said. You might not like what you find out. Well, I'd say the same about myself. Yeah, but you'll have your career back once you find a job. You have football friends. My situation is different, I'm sure. Are you married? <laughs> I probably would have been by now had the incident not happened. No, are you? No. Is there a warrant for your arrest or something? No. You? No. Shit, this is so strange. You're beautiful. And I I've noticed you around the building for some time now. I've been living here a year. What? And you never said anything until the elevator? 9J threw his hands up, frustrated at something. I'm a mess. I've been trying not to make myself into someone's problem. Well, I can bet you big money we both don't have that I'm a bigger mess than you. Don't dare me. <laughs> yeah, like you scare me. You can't even save yourself in a stalled elevator. Not fair. Well, that's practically all I know about you. Don't dare me. You already said that. He didn't have to say it a third time because by then his mouth was on mine and we were kissing. I missed kissing. Oh God, I missed it. I'd always enjoyed it. All different ways it could be done. Lips and tongues and mouths. Sweet, urgent, messy, angry. All of it. I loved how vulnerable it made me. How powerful too. What I could find out from the person, from the kiss itself. Things that he'd never say or hadn't said yet. It was my idea to go to 9M. My place. After the breakup with Bradley. And when I came to accept I would be kissing someone else eventually. I told myself that it had to be on my own terms. It would have been against my instincts to invite a new guy into my home on what was essentially a first date, but this guy already knew where I lived. And I knew I had no cameras around. We fell onto the couch. No, I pushed him down there and leapt right on top of him, kissing, I told myself, just kissing. His lips were strong, I remembered thinking, holding up well against my attack because... It felt to me like I was pushing so hard. He groaned and pulled me closer, tongue tasting mine. It was like he missed kissing too. His skin was warm, lick it, lick him. The thought came quickly and I did, from his chin down to his throat, nibbling the skin there. He made a sound. No words, but the hand on my hip pulled me in and ground me against a seriously hard erection. Maybe he missed something else also. I should tell him that I wasn't intending to have sex with someone whose name I didn't even know, regardless of how much I missed it, but instead of saying words, I made sounds too, and pushed another kiss deep into his mouth, 
he responded to that just the way I wanted him to, with surprise and acceptance and retaliation. He gave back as much as he got. My tongue got a workout. This guy was going to be so good, I could tell. If we could get past the point when I'd tell him he could watch me have sex with someone else online, when was the right time to tell someone? Was I expected to mention it when I accepted his dinner invite? If he didn't already know, was he supposed to hear it from me? One of Janine's main messages of comfort to me was that the world of people who watch sex videos was not the entire world. Sure, they were millions upon millions of people, but they were not the world. And I could live my entire life never having to meet any of those people, those millions of people. But there was a greater circle that surrounded that, of people who probably wouldn't watch, but would judge, would care, would get the hell out of this couch before sticking more of his tongue down my throat. What did 9J deserve to know? It's none of his business, Janine had said. You'll find it best to move on from people who will make you feel like shit because of what happened. It wasn't your fault. That was comforting. And decent human being of her, but here's the thing. I would want to know. I'd asked Bradley a bunch of questions when we became serious. Who had he done this with? Was I going to be at risk for something? Was someone going to be coming at me for revenge? And he and I both, we gave our answers. Revealed our cards. Shit. Nine was so good looking and great at kissing. I couldn't just keep all of this from him. We won't, you know, I said, tearing my mouth from his. He blinked and tried to focus. Won't what? Have sex right now. Not when we don't even know each other. Oh, that. He shook his head a little waking himself up. Of course, I totally understand. I'm glad you do. This conversation didn't change how I was still straddling him, still touching the skin of his throat with my fingers, but maybe I didn't want to let go just yet. Knowing that there was a 90% chance that I was going to get dumped. Or we could just tell each other our names now, he said. So we can feel better about hooking up with a stranger. With a neighbor. You're hooking up with a neighbor, not a stranger. If it were that easy, then why haven't you told me yours yet? He sighed, pressing his lips against my neck. Shit. I understand. I should explain, he said, looking back up at me, putting those eyes in my view again. I should. Okay. I didn't kill anyone. I'm not a criminal. I'm not married or a drug dealer. I don't have a sexually transmitted infection or anything. Well, neither did I. You're just an unemployed chemical engineer? Well, not just. Whatever it was, he had a hard time composing his next sentence. Is it something I'll find out about you if I Google your name? He nodded. Yes. That already filled in half the blanks. That's funny. Me too. So you seriously don't know who I am? You don't know what I'm talking about? You mean what you're not talking about? No, I don't. You're kind of hyping it up like it's this wicked giant thing, though. It's a big deal to me. I don't want anyone to have to worry about it. Then it dawned on him. What was happening here? That's your thing, too? Kind of. You don't recognize me either, do you? He shook his head. I don't. But it can't be that bad. If it weren't that bad, we'd be doing something else right now. We're obviously not over it, whatever our things are. Damn it. Still, he wasn't letting go. I felt his hands caressing my shoulder blades, cupping them, cradling them. If it's worth anything, I think you're hot, and I enjoyed talking to you. Past tense. I understand if you never want to see me again once you find out. We live on the same floor. I'm going to be easy to avoid, he said. 
the sad blue eyes. I make it easy for people to do that. I kissed him again. We kissed like it was goodbye, pulled and strained against clothing that never came off. We kissed for a long time, more than an hour, I'm sure. And then it was him who sighed a real goodbye and headed to my door, toward his own cave around the corner. Giomella, he said. Iris Lenariocca, I said. He smiled. Good night, Iris. Good night, Gio. Why did I have to be the kind of person who liked looking up stuff and reading it and clicking more and reading more until I knew too much? You'd think that I would have thrown my laptop away, but it actually provided reassurance, seeing how much less the incident was being talked about in the weeks and months that followed. When I got to bed, I lay there, thinking about 9J, Gio's name, Gio Mella. It was vaguely familiar. But I wouldn't win any quizzes on naming celebrities or famous people anyway. I only knew that it wasn't the last name of any of my friends, relatives, anyone I worked with. I also wondered how it was spelled, because it probably would have been on a sign or a building somewhere. Since there seemed to be a prominent family business and all. Geo, though. So, that was his name. I didn't even know what I was expecting. You can do it. I mean, he expects you to. So I did the thing on Google. Geo Mela Scandal. Which is what you did if you needed to know that thing that the guy you just met was hiding from. That was Chapter 5 of Iris After the Incident, narrated by Rachel Coates. Text and production copyright by Mina Vias Guerra. At the end of this chapter, Iris and Gio finally get each other's names, which means they're likely to go on Google and find out exactly what the internet has been saying about them. For a different take on the effect of an internet scandal on people and romance, check out Scandalized by Tara Frejas. Link in the description.